In the world of professional modeling, the camera reveals both stars in the making and major personal struggles. Excellent. I almost didn't even notice you had a snout. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most memorable America's Next Top Model photo shoots. I don't even dance on the ground, let alone on stilts. For this list, we've selected the most entertaining and outlandish photo shoot moments of Tyra Banks' 22 cycle run on this American reality television series and interactive competition. This is great. Oh my God. Number 20, Wild Boys and Girls. I love you. <laughs> MTV Wild Boys. During cycle five, the models receive a variety of surprises. First, there's the glamorous Hollywood Hills location. Then, MTV's Wild Boys show up for the Entourage Gone Wild theme. Now the Wild Boys are gonna be your Entourage Gone Wild. With Nadia Pandolfo behind the camera, many of the girls are distracted by the moment, as the guys actually show more skin and personality than the models. Well, except for Lisa D'Amato who feels right at home with the boys and steals the show by showing up in a diaper. I'm wearing your guys' underwear! When Lisa takes a public pee, her peers realize that they're dealing with some formidable competition. We have to see if they work! Lisa, don't pee in there. No, please do. A model who is arguably more wild than the wild boys. Number 19, Scared Guppies. In Thailand's floating market, the Cycle 6 models all share a special fragrance, fish. You girls are going to be the catch of the day, as if we are fishing you out of this waterway. They're literally flipped upside down, seemingly more concerned with not falling over than Jaturang Haranyakan's camera and direction. For this shoot, the girls are once again forced to adapt on the fly, as they try oh so hard to maintain their model mojo instead of looking like scared guppies. Keep changing up your hands, Bronda. The pain is showing on your face. The concept is fishy, along with Jay Manuel's feedback. While models often manage to smile through difficult shoots, the pain was real during this Thai production. This is cutting off my circulation in my stomach. If you twist your hips to camera, it won't hurt as much. Twist, there you go. Number 18, Candy Coated. Your hair, makeup, wardrobe is going to be candy which means you're going to be nude. During this Cycle 8 shoot, the girls expose themselves to photographer Joseph Coltice, but it's a tasteful concept, as they're partially covered with candy. Some girls are uncomfortable with the idea, and for good reason, while others fully embrace their edible personal accessories. That's cute. You know what, Jay? I think I'm more comfortable naked. That's uh, interesting. As a result, it's a memorable shoot for all the polarizing reactions, and how a select few showcase their fabulous shapes and personalities. Jasmine has no problem with her Dulce de Leche look, and it's this type of poise that helped her win the entire competition. I'm hoping I'm shining through, showing them that I belong here. Number 17, Up the Ladder. You're gonna be hanging off this. <laughs> For this Cycle 11 shoot with Mike Ruiz, the America's Next Top Model competition reaches a new dimension. The models don't actually seem phased by the hot air balloon concept, but the idea is eventually scrapped because of some windy weather. There's about eight different men trying to hold the balloon down and my nerves kick in. Rather than dangling from the sky, the contestants stay closer to Earth. Some bring their A-game, while others struggle with the latter. Even the model turned mainstream actress Annalie Tipton. When you're up there, it's definitely much more difficult than you realize when you're standing on the ground. The revised idea is more basic than the original, and the shoot is a mixed bag of poses, with a few memorable exceptions. Nice! That was gorgeous! Nice, nice! Got it! Woo! All right, Mike, that's a wrap! Number 16, Akuna Matata. I really want to sell your legs in this shot. I need you to keep in mind, I want this to be a strong fashion pose. There we go. Near the end of Cycle 6, the contestants arrive in beautiful Thailand and meet an enormous yet gentle elephant. For this Venus Razors project, Pong Sak Tung Tya snaps the photos, and the girls hilariously try to be graceful alongside their rough-skinned friend. Shooting with an elephant that reminds me of an ancient dinosaur, because they are in the dinosaur family. At times, it's not entirely clear which model is more nervous, beauty or beast. Yet the contestants do seem to appreciate the unique opportunity. It's a nerve-wracking photo shoot, but one that looks amazing when all's said and done. 
for this jungle production, America's top models are truly in touch with nature. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> All right, Joni, she crawls up the real way. Yeah. <laughs> Number 15, Adams and Eves. I got the Heavenly Eve, which was basically a painting of like the 15th chapel, the ceiling of it, on me. In the Cycle 2 premiere, Tyra surprises the contestants by returning them to their natural state. In collaboration with Fresh Look contact lenses and the show's own Nigel Barker, the shoot begins badly when Janasha fails to wake up for work. I thought I would hear their alarm clock, or at least them. Or maybe someone would wake me up. I don't know how this happened. Yet, the gig must go on. Fortunately for the models, there are plenty of atoms to complement the eaves, resulting in a revealing and exotic photo shoot. But it's the behind-the-scenes drama that makes it a classic, as the contestants clash with each other and their photographer. And he thought that if I didn't want to be a part of it, then, you know, I, I shouldn't be in his presence whatsoever. Number 14. Underwater with Matthew Ralston. Matthew Ralston. If you don't know who he is, you stupid. Early on in Cycle 15, Tyra's beauties pose with some underwater uglies. For this shoot, the contestants are super excited to work with the iconic Matthew Ralston, making them a little more at ease for the sea creature shoot. Jay pulls some Jedi mind tricks by suggesting the models are in the club. So you know what I want you to do? In your head, I want to hear the boom of the club. Boom. Okay. Boom. And it somehow works as the contestants bring their best. For this shoot, there is some extra energy on set, as the photographer has a special way of connecting. I'm not the kind of photographer that just worries about the lighting or the camera. I'm involved in the whole creation of the image. Just when everything seems on point, though, some petty complaints ruin the vibe. At the end of the day, it's pushing through anything that's uncomfortable to deliver. Still, it's one of the more focused top model shoots. Ooh, look at that! Pretty! Number 13, a top model horror story. Look at that. How eerie is that? It's great. I have so little to say. This is really good. For this macabre shoot, photographer Mike Rosenthal seeks high fashion with a dark concept. It's an original idea, but a horrific one too. And the premise leads some contestants to a real dark place. What are you thinking about, JL? My friend overdosed in a week ago. Really? Yeah. For the most part, though, the models have fun and fully immerse themselves into the vibe. This is a different way to challenge the contestants midway through the season, and it toughens them up for the final leg of the cycle. Furthermore, it suggests that aspiring models should be ready for anything, even if it terrifies them. Good job, Britt. You always commit. <laughs> Can I have a towel? Someone get this girl a towel and a tent and a shot. Number 12, Drag Queens. The room is complete mayhem. I look over and I see a dude, and I look a little closer and it's Natasha. After styling themselves in this Cycle 8 episode, the contestants receive some light-hearted criticism from Jay Manuel. But it's merely a setup for a gender-bending shoot with photographer Richard Reinsdorf, as the models take on male personas and pose with actual drag queens. Work it, there you go. Jasmine commanded that set. Some of them overthink the premise and struggle with the direction. Where, where are you going with this, Dion? I just went back to like the magazines where you just see the, the men in these great business suits not really doing too much. Overall, though, it's one of the more comedic top model photo shoots, if only because the contestants are challenged to view themselves differently and mostly have fun with their new personalities. Love the energy, love the attitude. Oh, I like that, Renee. I love the variety. There you go. I got positive feedback from Jay. Hopefully I'll get called first again. Number 11, Welcome to the Circus. Good morning and welcome to the circus. In Cycle 8, photographer Mike Rosenthal memorably directed a crime scene shoot. But one cycle previously, he provoked the contestants and viewers with a photographic circus. Shortly before the shoot, Tyra discusses hopes and fears educating each model about the demanding world of high fashion. That is a fear. It's such a ticking time clock, and I have to get it now, and I have to get it now. I'm going to be too old. I'm going to have to retire when I'm 28, because that means I'm a senior citizen. During the shoot, the contestants forget about their insecurities and lock into circus mode. The presence of Seventeen Magazine's editor-in-chief inspires them even more. Hey, the modeling business can be like a real-life circus, so this playful desert shoot was the perfect way to prepare and motivate the talent. I know that I have to go out there and rock it. Number 10, Landfill Couture. On 
Unbelievable. While the average girl might be skeptical of a landfill photo shoot in Orange County, it all made sense during cycle 16 of America's Next Top Model. It's a big old place where everyone dumps all their trash. With a trip to Morocco in sight, the remaining contestants first had to demonstrate their ability to wear the graceful garbage couture of Michael Cinco. I specifically designed couture dresses for you girls using recycled materials like broken mirror and make them look like expensive gemstones. As photographer Nigel Barker articulated, some of the girls proved to be unpredictable wildcards. And given the circumstances, it's not hard to understand why. Now, this is a girl who wants a shot. She is down in the garbage. But on the flip side, the strongest models embraced the unique, eco-friendly couture and set their eyes on the prize. Let's go like that. Beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Direct on. Number 9. Fuerza Bruta. Take a look at what you'll be doing. To succeed in an industry like this, models must put all their troubles behind them and break through that wall, so to speak. And in Cycle 10, the contestants were stripped down raw for a wet shoot in the style of the off-Broadway show Fuerza Bruta. Where the performers use their bodies to evoke an emotional response from the audience. Photographed by Mike Rosenthal, this particular shoot highlighted models that struggled mightily with their approach. In fact, Claire took a literal head-first approach. Even so, the experience made for great TV, and the most successful women found organic and flowing ways to execute their poses. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Dominique, you rocked my world in that shoot. Number eight, bloody baths. You're all going to be literally blind as a bat. Wow. Oh my God. After somewhat of a failed CoverGirl clean commercial in cycle 14, the contestants reached the dark side. Yeah, I am officially scared. For this gothic shoot, Tyra enlisted photographer Sarah Silver. But the group didn't seem entirely thrilled about the focal set piece, a bathtub full of blood. This is where you're going to be working. There. Right in the blood. You're going to be in that? But with the whiteout contact lenses presenting more difficulty than anything else, the women learned to feel the essence of the shoot rather than submitting to the inherent horror. Just don't think about it, just do it. Oh, I just dropped it. I, I can't do it. And once certain contestants found their groove and embraced the professional guidance, they rose above the bloodbath and positioned themselves for a positive final judgment. Number seven, bald is beautiful. So there's a reason we have Eve here today. You girls are going bald. Early on in Cycle 6, the contestants trembled with anticipation as a collective head shave loomed before them. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a little nervous, just a little. Alas, the group was not destined to have bare heads, although they did learn that bald is beautiful. Okay, I hate to interrupt you, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> this is me, Jay. Okay, this is you? I haven't, I haven't let me out yet. Oh, yeah. Give me five, because this, this is fierce. After an extensive makeup process, each woman found different ways to enhance her look while a select few looked more like extraterrestrials rather than top models. Gina looked like a deer caught in headlights in every frame. But therein lies the challenge when your facial facade is drastically altered. And with the addition of some Swarovski crystals, those models were bald, beautiful, and blinging. That's you really elegant. Well, most of them. Put a thought in your head, basically. Number six, Mongolian warriors. So, you are a warrior trying to get on the other side of that wall. This is your army. While we love the epic scale of this shoot, it's also a prime example of Top Model's uncomfortable relationship with cultural appropriation. Near the conclusion of Cycle 9, the models traveled to China and learned a poignant history lesson on the four great beauties before shooting on the Great Wall with Tyra herself. I'm really nervous to do a shoot with Tyra, but it's another example of, you know, knowing that you have to kick ass. The final four were told to use the stunning setting to portray strength and veracity. Unfortunately, leaning into stereotypes about Mongolian warriors to do this. Now, the wall was originally erected to keep out the Mongols and the barbarians. So for today's photo shoot, you girls are going to be the enemy. While Tyra was able to get creative and memorable shots, this theme proved that sometimes the camera can use a historical lens too. Number five, Greek salad. You guys are going to be shooting in a Greek salad that you'll be modeling underwear. By the time the contestants reached the island of Crete in cycle 17, a giant bowl of Greek salad had to be conquered for a spot in the finale. Now, Dominique, remember you're gonna work 
your salad. I mean, we want it to look fashionable, but work it. Do you know what I mean? And with the acclaimed Nikos Papadopoulos taking the shots, the remaining models didn't exactly conquer said bowl, despite the striking and vivid imagery of the location. In fact, Shannon actually refused to mix it up in lingerie. So you're not doing it mm -mm. at all. But when in Greece, one does not simply avoid the Greek salad. Getting into the bowl, it kind of feels like you're stepping into someone's organs. And when it was all said and done, the elimination was a relatively easy decision. You're a great model, but when you came to All Stars, you just became a good model. Number four, biracial beauties. Brittany, you are going to be Native American and East Indian. Oh. We had to include this in our list of most memorable shoots, even if it's an entry we'd rather forget. You girls are gonna undergo a transformation and actually have to portray two very different distinct races. For this Cycle 13 challenge, Tyra encouraged contestants to embody various ethnicities and nationalities. It might not even be a necessary exact of what they've worn even in the past. It's a fashion interpretation. It was a stunningly insensitive display that included blackface and racial caricatures of all kinds, building on the aforementioned troubling relationship with appropriation. While we normally prefer to celebrate the talented models in this show, this challenge goes down as a grim reminder of how our standards of beauty are not free from the legacy of systemic racism. It's a fashion interpretation. Number three, diamonds and tarantulas. You think I'm scared? Just over halfway through cycle three, the relatively young reality series presented a serious obstacle for the America's Next Top Model beauties. And no, it wasn't the Voraggio diamonds. So to make sure this doesn't look like a typical jewelry ad, we do have someone else for you to pose with today in your shot. So can we have our other person? It was the live tarantula, of course. And even the most focused of models would or should be concerned about a gigantic furry spider draped across their face. Ah, it's a spider, spider. But hey, Takara showed little fear. Your eyes, bigger eyes. However, she was the one that was eventually sent packing while the frightened Eva went on to win the entire competition. I'm disappointed that I showed the vulnerability. Shot by Bill Diodato, this photo shoot showed potential contestants what they might have to overcome and endure. Number two, seven deadly sins. Well, I hope none of you are afraid of tight and confined creepy spaces. With only seven contestants left in cycle four, the girls were to convey the seven deadly sins in an eight foot grave under the direction of photographer Johan Wolf. And in the process, one particular model received some distressing news. Kayla just got information that one of her friends from high school had just passed away. Forced to confront the death of her friend and a cemetery photo shoot, Kaylin overcame the adversity and produced one of the more unique shots in the series' history. Come on, let's hear it. Ah! ah. Louder. Ah! And though the creative aesthetic was a bit creepy, it was Kaylin's perseverance that made this a most unforgettable photo shoot, with wrath looming over the entire production. I hope I did well enough to pull off a good picture to stay here this week, but I guess I just have to wait and see. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Steampunk fashion, couture for the apocalypse. Let's give some variety in the face, a little more intense. Beautiful. Bullfighting in Spain, to see who could be the most matadorable. I want arrogance, pride, I want fear. You're holding that, that cape a little too delicately, there you go. Hello Kitty couture, kawaii to the max. Just have fun with this. Today is the day we can really have fun. Yeah. Hello Kitty is about fun and embracing our youth. Exotic birds. We see the models spread their wings. Here we go. Look at me. Beautiful. Love it. Martial artists. The models fight for their spot in the competition. The nunchucks are really hard. I'm swirling around everywhere. Plus, I'm twisting around. I'm like... Beautiful, yeah, love good. that. Love Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, snakes. I have a snake and I was the only one that wasn't a puss about it because I love snakes. In the first cycle of America's Next Top Model, 
there was literally no series precedent for the contestants to study. And so, when photographer Troy Ward referenced a special guest model, the girls probably anticipated a human being rather than a collection of slimy and slithering snakes. We've brought models in from all over the world to be with us here. For the most part, the shoot turned out well, but this was a telling moment as the series progressed forward. Because if an aspiring model can't handle a snake among a team of professionals, she or he probably can't handle the business as a whole. And certainly not as America's next top model. Robin was a little bit frozen by everything that was going on around her, but she's beautiful. I mean, she's definitely very beautiful. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.